So I'm going to start off here by reacting um, a metal, magnesium, um, with some sulfuric acid. So I'm going to make sure I'm not holding the boiling tube if I pour some sulfuric acid in there. So here's my boiling tube with some sulfuric acid in. And all I'm going to do now is drop some um, magnesium in here. Some bubbling is because we are producing hydrogen. When metals react with acids, they produce a salt and they produce hydrogen. If you put a lit splint inside um, a test tube with hydrogen, you get a squeaky pop. So it's reacted and there's no longer some magnesium metal in there. However, we still have some acid left over. So if I add some more metal, you'll see that it fizzes again. So we've still got some acid and the acid is reacting with the metal and it's producing hydrogen. So you would need to keep adding that metal until it stops fizzing. Because what we're forming here, when the metal reacts with the sulfuric acid, it forms a salt. And the salt is called magnesium sulfate. Now at the moment, you just have to take my word for it because all you can see here is we started off with a colourless liquid. We've still got a colourless liquid. Um, the magnesium is disappearing. Um, but there's no sign there that we've got a salt. So what we need to do now is show that there is a salt here. What happens is the magnesium reacts with the acid and it produces a salt plus hydrogen, but the salt is now dissolved in the water. What we could do next is to transfer this to an evaporating basin. And if we transfer it to an evaporating basin, we can heat it using a Bunsen burner to evaporate away all the water and to isolate the salt. Now I'm not going to do that at the moment because if I add another bit of magnesium to this, it's fizzing again. That means that I've still got acid there. Um, if I started to heat this now, if there's unreacted acid in there, then I would give off toxic fumes. So I'm not going to heat this. Instead, luckily here that um, another group made earlier, is hopefully you can see that we've got crystals in here now we've got so we can actually take these crystals out of the um, evaporating basin crystals of magnesium sulfate we reacted magnesium with sulfuric acid we made magnesium sulfate so another way to make a soluble salt is again to use um, an acid so I've got sulfuric acid here again but this time I'm going to form it um, react it with a metal that has already reacted with oxygen. So I'm reacting it with metal oxide, with copper oxide powder like this. So copper oxide, a black powder. Now again, we've got a colourless acid here and I've got a black powder. Sprinkling, so I'm using a spatula here, I'm using, adding a sprinkling only of the copper oxide. There we go. Remember Um, so I have to be very careful here because if all of the copper oxide has reacted away then it's possible that all the copper oxide has gone but we've still got some acid left over. So remember the copper oxide was the black powder, just adding a little bit more there, I've only put about half a cup. All this acid has gone. We started off with copper oxide, so copper, an oxide of copper, and sulfuric acid, copper, sulfuric acid, copper sulfate. But now we want to get the salt, we want to prove that the salt's there, we want to evaporate off all the water. I still have some unreacted copper oxide in there, that shows that all the sulfuric acid um, is gone. But before I start heating this, I've got my Bunsen and tripod and gauze set here. Before I start on that, I want to get rid of all this unreacted copper oxide. I don't want this to be inside my evaporating basin when I try to form the crystals. The blue liquid is going through. That's our water containing our soluble salt, our dissolved salt. And I've collected the insoluble, unreacted copper oxide in the filter paper. Inside is my dissolved salt. So I can now heat this to evaporate the water. 
I have to be very careful here with a few things. First of all, if it's spitting, you just remove the heat as it goes to stop it spitting. You only want to evaporate away about half of the water and then you leave the rest of it to evaporate um, just at room temperature. Yes. If you drive off the water too quickly, you form um, an anhydrous salt. So you can see we've got this, um, eventually that would be a white powder. Um, this one here, you can see that they've driven off the water quite fast around the edge and we're beginning to get the small powdery crystals. But in the centre, I don't know if you can see, we're beginning to form much larger crystals. This one has been left to form quite slowly, so you can see the crystals inside. Here we formed a beautiful, large copper sulfate crystal.